I've been a cyclist as far as I can remember my whole life. I remember riding on a bike with my dad before I knew. I remember getting my first bike. I think I got my first bike when I was four years old. So I've been a cyclist for a long, long time. How many years is that? That's 54 years I've been cycling. So I've actually tried riding one of these bikes and it's not easy at all. I, um, it's hard to get on for the first place, so you have to get a step to get up on it. I have no idea how they used to ride these back in the day, but this is one of the first bike models. It's got a really simple brake that applies pressure to the rubber wheel, and uh, that doesn't look very fun to take a tour up the mountain on to me, but it probably was pretty effective for someone trying to get to work or delivering something during the day or just a little bit of recreation for the park on Saturday. Pretty fun. I would call this the, the beginnings of a, of a beach cruiser. These were really popular in the 1930s through the 1950s, and they're back to popular now. If you go to the beach, you'll see the same style handlebars, you'll see the same type, type seat, and you're really cool if you're riding this around on the boardwalk at the beach with your surfboard hanging off the side. Great bike all steel frame, really sturdy, great paint jobs with pinstriping and all sorts of fun stuff on them. Um, just classic American uh, manufacturing here. I remember my very first big wheel. It was a big deal. Um, the great thing about a big wheel, it had an adjustable seat. If you were short or, or long, um, you could move it way up. You could take this seat back and move it back. You have three different different motions on that. You could wear out the front wheel and you'd have to get a new one because it's not replaceable, it's just plastic. And some of them came with a handbrake so you could turn and you could really skid, it was really fun. Big wheels were a big deal uh, in the 1970s and I remember my very first one, I don't think I only got one, but it was a blast and I was one of the cool kids on the block when I got my big wheel. This is the classic 1970s Huffy bike. This was the envy of the neighborhood. Um, banana seat, high, high handlebars. So when I was a kid, we used to take three of us to school on one of these bikes. I had one that was a little bit different than this, but pretty much the same. Mine was, mine was actually made by Firestone, believe it or not tire company was making bicycles and mine had a small front wheel and a little shock up here but these 1970s early 70s bikes are amazing with the banana seat you can put your buddy back here you sit here and pedal and then you put another friend on the handlebars and you go to school you could take three of you it was pretty efficient so if you're on a college campus nowadays and you have a classic bike like this from the 1970s you're pretty cool um, Typical brake or the, the gear structure here. You've got the chrome molly frame with the with the with the little weld brackets here that are super cool and ornate. This is a pretty cool bike. Um, center pull brakes. You got you can stand you can pull the brakes from the top or the bottom. Um, pretty fun, pretty classic 1970s, 1980s road bike. Um, Quick release hubs here. Sometimes you had a quick release on your seat so you could adjust it as needed. Um, but just great center pole um, features here. If you, um, if you adjust this properly, so that would be the ride mode. This is, I get a flat change my tire mode and it, it releases a brake so you can get the tire off and, and patch your tire. Pretty cool Italian made bike. Um, uh, standard, so these pedals don't have any clips on them, um, but they do have the holes for the toe clips that you could put on, a lot of the toe cages. Um, then, then clipless became a big thing, but the little brackets here to hold the cabling on, so classic, so great, um, really innovative. This has been cleaned up nicely. Um, super thin, lightweight gum wall tires. That's a classic bike. My, I have a son in college and he's got an old Italian bike like this and he thinks he's the bee's knee. He thinks he's pretty cool. This is a unicycle. 
I got my first unicycle when I was eight years old. I got it for Christmas. And I had so much fun learning how to ride that. I just disappeared into the garage for days and held onto the garage door on the inside and tried to ride it around. I'd move my parents' car, we'd get the car moved out and I had the whole inside of the garage because it was winter and it was cold. But I learned how to ride my unicycle. Mine did not have an air tire. Mine had a hard tire on it, just a hard plastic tire on it. But I've learned how to ride a unicycle and currently I own three of them. And I have a lot of fun riding my unicycle around the neighborhood. I used to ride it in parades. I used to have a lot of fun riding unicycles. So I love unicycles. I actually love this bike. Um, since I've had a love for bikes my whole life, um, I've looked for ways that I could use that passion in my professional life and in a volunteering way. Currently, I sit on the on a board with Utah, uh, excuse me, with Wasatch Adaptive Sports. This is a great example of an adaptive bike for someone that might need to do, um, you know, someone might have a disability and this will adapt to them and they can um, have, some, have some help here with someone to help them steer it or drive it. They can have, we can tighten this up. It'll, there's a lot of features here. Obviously you can, can strap the person in, give them the security they need, and you can have some freedom for someone with adaptive needs. There are hundreds of models of adaptive bikes and um, this just happens to be one of them. It's a, this is a great model, really safe, three wheels, some are four wheels, some are mountain bikes, some are road bikes, um, some are recumbent, some are stand up, all, all types of, of different adaptive bikes and availability. Some are even battery powered or electric bikes. So what a great thing so um, our adaptive community can have access to biking. I love this, love this a lot. So I'm not sure how many of these bikes are in massive, in, in manufactured in a big way. These are so customized. Um, it just became a culture in the US. Um, anything you could put on it. I think it came probably from the British and the, 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 uh, the Vespa scooters that were all tripped out. I think this became the American version of it. You can see it's got a shock system here. It's got a headlight. It's all kind of a, a gold painted or a, a gold chromed bike. It's got rear view mirrors. It's got a horn. It's got another mirror. The more mirrors you had, the cooler you were. I like the difference between the, the chrome and the gold chromed the uh, velour seat, the spare tire, um, just really, really unique. It's even got some tailpipes here that obviously are all for looks. This bike is for looks. Um, it's just a, it was just a trend. It became a really cool um, individualistic kind of thing. How can I trip out my bike? Well, this one's pretty tripped out. It's got a front bumper, it's got flared fenders. Uh, the, even the pedals, look at those pedals, they're pretty cool. Um, uh, but simple bike motion, you pedal this thing just like you pedal any other bike, but it's just got a little bit of flair to it, a little bit of fashion, pretty cool. In Utah, there's such amazing cycling available. I, you take any four corner of this state and you've got amazing trails. You've got opportunities for, for road biking, for gravel biking, for mountain biking, for snow bike, you know, snow bikes. You can go anywhere in this state and find incredible bike trails, um, bike friendly roads. If you're a road cyclist, um, gosh, there's, you can ride your bike to Lake Powell from the Wasatch Front. There's just so many fun things to do on bikes from 100 mile, there's lots of races to get in, but there's also just a lot of fun day-to-day -day recreation. The great thing about trails now is they're just not making trails, uh, little single track trails. They're making trails that are more, um, they're more eligible for more people to ride. All the, all the trails that are made now are made with adaptive bikers in, in mind, and they're wider, they're safer. When you come across another biker, there's room to pass. In the past, you'd have to get over, get off. The, psych, the biking, I think right here, right by Thanksgiving point here, we probably within, 
I know just the the Draper the Draper the Draper Trail system has 165 miles of trails just five minutes from here. There's so much great cycling to happen. Um, a lot of great canyons to ride. It's so fun.